3 or 4 in the morning, that was when it happened. When my world got turned upside down, and I realized just how much we don't know. The year was 2011, and I was 7 years old. I had just finished dinner and was lounging about watching Spongebob, when my mom told me it was time for bed. But I didn't want to stop watching. It was a pizza delivery episode, one of the best ones out there. I wanted to at least finish it before going to sleep. My mom didn't relent and forced me to go to my bedroom. Before shutting off the light, she made me promise that I wouldn't use my bedroom TV to finish the episode. I thought she just wanted me to get a good night's rest, but now I believe she just wanted to protect me from it. I waited until she closed the door before turning on my TV. If I kept it on a low enough volume, she shouldn't be able to catch me. The hijinks of Spongebob, Patrick, and the whole game made me happy. One episode passed, then another, then another, and I slowly grew more and more tired, until finally, I fell asleep. I wish I stayed asleep. At first, it was just a dull buzzing, as my senses were still fogged by sleep. But after a few seconds passed, my eyes focused on the TV, the same TV that I had so foolishly left playing many hours ago. All that was on the screen was a shot of the sky, with a palm tree just barely out of view. My ears picked up on a certain ringing, as if a bell of some sort was being struck. Little did I know that this bell could have very easily been a death knell for me. As my brain finally rose out of its stupor, I finally realized that the bell was coming from the TV, and was in fact a song of some sort. That's when it started. Out of nowhere, the music crescendos into a full discordant cacophony that pierces the silence of my room. The once empty sky in the TV becomes flooded with faces, some men, some women, some children, all bouncing into frame and smiling directly at me. As if the fourth wall separating me from them was non-existent, they peered directly into my soul. They were all disturbing, but one, one stuck out. He was in almost every shot, either in the foreground or background, as if the others couldn't exist without him, where others may have shown slight kindness behind their smile. He had none. That was not a smile for me, that was a smile for himself for he knew what was to come next. I had to know more about him, whatever he was. I leaned closer to the TV to try and see past the pixelated screen to read the name. Jor... Darkness. Silence. The TV went out. Just as soon as the song came in, it was gone, and I was alone with my thoughts. Or so I thought. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, and I began to once again see the outline of my room, I contemplated what I had just seen. Who were those people? Why was that song so loud? Who was this Jor person? If I could just find the TV remote, I could turn the TV back on and get the answers. I could have sworn I had it right on my bedstand. The remote has a red blinking light on it, so it shouldn't be too hard to find in the dark. Red light. Red light. My eyes scanned the room, but didn't see any light. That was until I looked down and saw a faint light on the floor, blinking on, then off. Off. I tried to find the source. On. It was coming from the other side of the room. Off. I began to follow the light. On. It ran all the way to the other wall. Off. Right into my closet door. Someone or something must have taken it there. I had never once placed my remote in my closet. I had vainly hoped that maybe my mom had put it there while I was sleeping. But then why would the TV still be on when I awoke? And how did it shut off if my remote is in the closet? Unfortunately, this question was answered when the knob turned and the closet door opened. I was paralyzed in fear. He stood there, eyes bloodshot red, holding the remote to illuminate his satanic smile. On, he lets go of the knob. Off, 
I hear his horse breathing. On, he has stepped outside of the closet, a foot closer to me. Off, I hear shuffling. On, he isn't there anymore. Off, I hear him laughing. On. I sprint out of the room and into my parents' room, screaming for my mom and dad. They shoot awake and start consoling me, but I'm inconsolable. They tell me it was just a bad dream, but I know I was awake. They go into my room and look around, but find nothing. They told me I could sleep in their bed that night, which ended up becoming the norm for the next month or so. It wasn't until years later that I became aware of the TV show, George Lopez. A seemingly innocent family sitcom, but I know better. I don't expect you to believe me. Hell, sometimes I second guess what I saw that night. You don't have to believe me. The only thing I ask of you is this. Whatever you do, don't leave Nickelodeon on when you go to bed. Otherwise, George Lopez will get you. <laughs>